Hi everyone, welcome to another Micmac Mail. I think this is Micmac Mail number 20. And because it's such a special occasion, I thought I'd crack out some really good stuff. Okay, this is all I have. I'm sorry. So since this is all I have in my mailbag, um, I thought I might crack open that 3D printer I got from Banggood uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, and assemble that and see how I go. Anyway, uh, on to the first one. So this came from, of course, Element 14. I had to order a couple of components and I had to beef out the order just to get free shipping. So the sole purpose of this order was just for these connectors. And uh, the reason uh, was because a mate of mine, Tim, uh, gave me a, a desk, um, which is a sit-stand desk and a fully automated desk. I uh, might even show you a clip of it. And it's fantastic. So uh, thanks a bunch, Tim. Um, of course, it wasn't free. I had to pay for a little bit of it, but that's fine. Um, it's certainly a lot cheaper than uh, buying one new. So I had to build up a, 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 a connector uh, for this so I could actually uh, make it run. So the other part of the order was uh, for a couple of uh, Atmel chips. And this one is the SAM 4S, uh, which is the SAM 4S Explained Pro. It's basically a, a development board uh, with all the GPIOs that you can possibly have broken out. Uh, I wanted to get more into the SAM, the Atmel SAM processors, uh, as these are sort of the next generation up from the plain AVRs. So the SAM 4S is a fairly uh, cool uh, processor. Uh, it's 120 megahertz Cortex-M4, uh, has onboard 2 meg program flash, 160 kilobyte RAM, it also has an FPU, so it has some fairly primitive DSP functions. Um, supports also SD, AMMC, which is nice. Runs off 3.3 volt logic, of course. Um, has the usual complement of SPI, I2C, USB, uh, 2.0 host and device mode. Uh, 22 DMA channels, uh, 15 ADC channels at up to one mega sample, so it's fairly speedy. Uh, real-time clock. So this is a 4S, so it has uh, 79 GPIOs, and also it has uh, hardware debounce filtering as well, so you don't need to add in complex debouncing if you've got buttons and switches, uh, which is nice. Uh, it's also got a peripheral pin select crossbar, which a lot of the Atmel chips uh, have these days. It allows you to multiplex multiple signals onto one physical pin, which is nice. But the reason why I got this one is because the quiescent current drops down to uh, one microamp, which is really nice. So this is a project I'm looking at doing, which is one of the basic requirements is that it needs to be extremely low power, uh, running on battery for a very long time. So that's this one. And so there's the SAM 4S. And the second one was the uh, SAM G53. The Atmel SAM G53 is uh, slightly slower clock rate, 48 megahertz. It's still a Cortex M4. Has only 512K of program flash, 96 kilobyte RAM. Everything else is fairly similar to the um, AT SAM 4S, uh, except it doesn't have the SD or AMMC support. Uh, fewer DMA channels, uh, and of course only 38 GPIOs. Uh, this one also can go down to one microamp sleep mode. So it's a toss up between whichever one I want to use, uh, whether I need in my project the ST uh, and EMC functionality. Uh, so actually stay tuned for that. It's got to be a nice little uh, product that I'm actually currently designing at the moment. Um, and hopefully I'll sell it on Tindy. This is a printer that was sent to me uh, from Banggood uh, as a review unit and I, fortunately I just haven't had time to really look at this so I'm going to give it a quick review. Uh, hopefully you'll better get it put in. Uh, I won't be able to do a full-on review because uh, that sort of thing just takes forever. It takes weeks really to iron out some of the bugs. Hopefully I'll be able to just get it going uh, today. Uh, so it comes in a acrylic uh, version and also a 3D printed version 
and this is pretty much all the stuff oh man this is going to take forever it's running around 8 mega 1248p I think that'll do everything that we need to do it's got all the stepper drivers and um, what else do we have? Uh, the power supply, which is really important. Uh, interestingly enough, <clears throat> in Australia, I've mentioned this before, in Australia, technically, this is quite illegal. You can't really distribute a product uh, to a customer like this. It's one of those things uh, in Australia, especially in New South Wales, you can't do your own wiring of uh, mains electricity. Got a heated plate, uh, which is nice. Uh, what else? Uh, the LCD, is it an LCD? Yeah, LCD controller. Uh, USB cable, oh, a bit of um, PLA or SLA, what do we call it? Oh, PLA, there you go. Cables, connectors, screws. Now uh, the nozzle to try and get this uh, installed. I went to the Banggood website, uh, the product link, and fortunately they have some videos up there already. Otherwise it would have taken me forever to figure this one out. So I'll have a quick watch of those and we'll see where we get to. Of course, I can't watch uh, YouTube videos at one time speed anymore. I have to go to 1.5 at least. Okay, so apparently I've got to install it this way. Oh man, this, this is going to take forever. So uh, just whistle quietly to yourself and see if I can get this done. So I think it goes this way. Excellent, looking good so far. And then I need to find an M3. I'm impressed so far, everything's all very clearly labelled. Um, so I'm making it fairly easy for you. Um, but it's just going to take a while to build. And really, if you want to build one of these yourself, I really strongly suggest going and seeing that video. Uh, that Banggood have made. <laughs> it's so much better than this one will ever be. So some Wally decided to put this thing upside down so I've got to fix this up now. So if you're ever peeling this off, as my daughter just told me, you've got to do it slowly. Yeah. If you do it too quickly, yeah apparently you did. <laughs> If you do it too quickly then you end up with all these sort of little bits here like this that you need to spend hours getting off. It's looking good, isn't it? And, oh man, this is just taking so long to do. So a bit of movie magic. I reckon all I need to do is just click my fingers and I'll be all done. Whoa! Look at that. That's so cool. I'll have to remember that for next time. Uh, anyway, so there's been a couple of issues uh, when I was putting it all together. Um, for example, one of the stepper motors didn't have any grub screws. Uh, so it's a bit of a pain in the neck. Um, what else was there? The LCD screen was a little bit uh, sort of dodgy. It wasn't, it wasn't too bad, it's just not really sitting flush. Uh, what else is there? Uh, there's also the issue with um, the power supply. Um, having to wire up your own mains in Australia, or especially in New South Wales, um, it's against the law. So uh, depending on your country, that may be a bit of an issue. So just make sure you take this uh, plastic off, uh, otherwise it probably might melt uh, once the uh, hotbed actually uh, starts to heat up. Now uh, the good things is everything was very well labelled. The two YouTube videos that came up were outstanding. Um, they just described everything. So you can follow along to that video and build it. Uh, and there was no real gotchas that I could see. Everything just was built uh, fairly well. It's fairly rugged. I haven't actually powered it on yet, so I don't know how well it works. 
I'll need to get some grub screws for that z-axis stepper motor um, because uh, it's just spinning freely at the moment so there's several things I had the Atmel 4S and the Atmel Sam G53 uh, and this printer stay tuned next time for when it gets stuck into this uh, printer and give it a, a good run thanks for watching see you next time